Copper metal and copper alloys often developed a blue-green coating called a patina when exposed to the atmosphere for a long period of time. Patinas are often seen on plaques, coins, and statues that contain copper. It is a copper patina that's responsible for the green color of the Statue of Liberty. A wide variety of compounds have been identified in copper patinas, and the formulas for a few of these compounds are displayed here. In this video, you'll learn how to simply produce a patina on a copper surface. Producing a copper patina is remarkably simple. I'm going to use these coins that contain copper, some aluminum foil, and a 9-volt battery. I'm also going to soak this paper towel in a mixture that contains 5 grams of table salt dissolved in 100 grams of household ammonia. After squeezing out some excess fluid, the paper towel is placed on top of some aluminum foil. Now the coins are placed on top of the paper towel, making certain they do not touch the foil. The positive terminal of the 9-volt battery is touched to one of the copper coins, while the negative terminal is touched to the foil. While doing this, I press down hard on the coin. If everything's working, you should be able to hear a faint hiss, which is due to the production of hydrogen gas at the interface between the foil and the back of the paper towel. Hey look! When I remove the coin, a blue spot has formed on the paper towel. This occurs because copper two ions, which are blue in color, are formed at the interface between the coin and the top of the paper towel. I'm going to repeat this process a few times, and you'll note that blue spots are formed all along the paper towel. Once I've done this, I'll take the treated side of the coin and flip it up so it can react with components in the air to form the patina on the surface of the coin. This usually takes a little bit of time, so let's repeat the process with the larger copper coin while we're waiting. If you look closely, you can see that a patina is slowly developing on the surface of the smaller coin. Now that we've treated each coin, let's watch what happens as they react with components in the air. We'll place a shiny copper coin nearby for comparison. Notice that a patina gradually develops over time. The patina on the larger coin appears to be somewhat yellow-green, while that of the smaller coin is more green in color. Given that copper metal left outdoors usually takes several years to develop a patina, it is remarkable to watch one develop right before your eyes. Here's what the coins look like after 10 minutes. Kind of neat, huh? Let's see what happens if we repeat this experiment using a paper towel soaked in a different mixture. In this case, I soaked the paper towel in a solution of 6 grams of sodium bicarbonate, that's baking soda, in 100 grams of water. It looks to me like the spots formed are a lighter blue color than before. And the patina that develops looks somewhat blue in color this time. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the science of copper patinas and how to generate them. Let me know in the comments how this experiment works for you if you try it out on your own. I'd love it if you'd share recipes for mixtures that produce particularly beautiful colors. Happy experimenting!